shot and it's a wonderful shot and it brings up the first This is Brian Lara with Wired 868 T20 competitions all over the world, obviously. What do you think is different about playing cricket in the Caribbean as opposed to anywhere else? Well, I look at it on, on, on TV. You're talking, if, if you're talking about T20 or my personal experience, my personal experience playing at home, it was always amazing. You know, if it's the Jamaican crowd, if it's, you know, right here in Port of Spain, uh, Barbados, very knowledgeable people, Guyana, it's, it's, it was always a fantastic experience playing at home. Um, the more gigantic stadium in Australia or England, Lords, it's a different atmosphere. You know, people are still very appreciative of what you're doing. The seats are still, you know, filled with, with knowledgeable people. Um, but playing cricket in the, in the Caribbean and looking at T20 in the Caribbean and seeing the party atmosphere, there is not much of that. And, and, and the cross sections of, of the crowd, you know, cricket is a lot a lot of times very dominated by male spectators you get a different feel in the Caribbean where everybody comes out and and there might be a fact that there's a 20 or 30 percent that really don't watch the game they're just into the you know the fun part of it which is great it's it's an awesome atmosphere and um, you know the calypsos the soakers the reggae all of these things lend itself to everyone having a wonderful time. How does that impact on the game going on and the field? Because some, let's say here, some cricketers say they don't, uh, everything outside the field is white noise, they don't really hear or focus on it. Does the, the atmosphere in the stands impact on what's happening in the, in the middle? Most definitely. I, I, you know, I could confess as a player, not as a captain, a player on the team, I would always ask my captain to push me in, in the corner of the Trini Pussy stand. Just, just be, to be around that atmosphere was just, you know, standing. Being at the Trini Pussy or, or on the other side by the ladies members, you'd prefer to be in the Trini Pussy. I think um, that for me was, was special. Um, as a captain, unfortunately, you have to be close inside a 30 yard circle, so I didn't really enjoy um, that part of it. But um, it's, for me, it is, it's always motivating. You know, it is, you know, even if people are shouting criticism, it's better that way than looking back and seeing empty seats. Yes. You know, unfortunately, that's the state of our cricket at test level at the moment. I, you know, I remember as a, a six, seven year old, um, maybe a little bit older, coming to the Oval in, I think, in 1979 when West Indies was playing against Pakistan in a test match. And me and my family was outside the Oval at 5 a.m. waiting for the gates to be open at 6. Pack crowd, first day of a test match, might have been a Thursday or Friday. Today, you know, you can literally pretty much walk in the oval at any point in time when a test cricket, when a test match is going on. That's unfortunate. But um, spectators form a very big part of any sporting event. Without them, you really don't have a sporting event. Um, fortunate now, um, money, money is coming through the turnstiles isn't the number one priority. Sponsors and all these people play a very big part in ensuring that, you know, you make a profit. But just getting them through the gates and having them in there is, is, creates a great buzz. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you breaking into a team that was on, on top of the world at that point in time? And was it that in itself more of a motivation as a young man who was a cricket fan, you know, with West Indies being the number one? Well, this is, you know, I like to answer this and, and if, you know, if any youngsters listening, in terms of being a kid and wanting to play for West Indies, you know, it, it's far reaching. You know, if you're seven, eight years old, it's impossible for you to play for the West Indies for the next 10, 12 years if you are any good. So for me, first of all, playing the game, and I played other sport, I played football, I played table tennis, um, squash, being active in all those different sporting arenas, give me, first of all, recreational time, um, taught me a lot as a, as, a, as a young man growing up at playing against other kids. And I use that as a you know, stepping stone each and every single time. I wanted to be best, even if it was street cricket. I wanted to bat the longest. Even if it was playing in the Savannah in, in Kantaro, I wanted to be one, you know, scoring the goals or anything like that. So 
as I progressed, you know, of course, the Westernese and listening to them and hearing about them, that was in the back of my mind. But I always wanted to be the best in each stage, on the 12, on the 16, on the 19. That, that two-year spell for you before you actually made a debut, when you were part of the Westernese team, but, but not playing yet, what was it like for you, you know, getting through that and staying focused? Actually, I don't think much, much uh, frustration stepped in. You got to understand, I was not kept out of the team by a losing team. I was kept out of the team by a winning team. And it's very hard to change a winning team. And uh, there might have been occasions where one or two players were um, slacking off and, you know, out of form. And I felt, you know, if I get an opportunity there, you know, I can make, you know, I can do something better. But Viv Richards always said, you know, your time is going to come. And um, I understood that. And the fact that they were giving other, the players that weren't doing very well an opportunity to stay within the team showed a lot of unity. And it showed the fact that if you do get in the team, then you'll be backed. You know, and um, it was tough because, you know, you, you sort of, you want to get out there, you want to play. But um, for me, looking back, it was maybe the best thing that was ever done. The fact that I was able to learn behind the scene before entering the arena. I had a taste, a one day game in, um, in England, a uh, test match in, in Pakistan, and all these things to just give me a taste of it. But um, yeah, I, I still look back and think, well, you know, I don't know if he was doing it with the best intentions, uh, Sir Vivian Richards, but it was the best thing that was ever done to me because the minute I got in, I knew I was not gonna come out. I knew I was not gonna do anything but my best and make sure that I was the number one pick in the team and because uh, I didn't want to spend any more time sitting on a bench. So when that opportunity came, I grabbed it and, um, you know, 17 years later, did pretty okay. All right. And for the, the latter half of your, your career, towards the end, and, and now Westernese, are you trying to stop the, the tide from turning type thing? Do you think it was inevitable that we'd be coming to the end of a, of a cycle? What was, the, what was it like at that point in time playing for Westernese? Well, yes, it's, it's always, it was always going to come to an end. Um, looking back at it, the job that, um, uh, or the feats that took uh, Clive Lloyd, Sir Vivian Richards, even going back to Sir Frank Worrell, where um, we weren't majorly successful, but they stood for something. And what happened between, you know, the, from the 50s onwards uh, for about 40 years up to maybe 1995, the success that we had on the field and even the recognition that we've had off the field was just unbelievable and was hard to, to maintain. Looking back now and looking at uh, the Atlantic uh, archipelago, looking at the islands and how we formed the different politics, other sports not having that unified force of being one. Um, and it's, it's, it's very difficult. So they have to be commended for what they did. What is disappointing is the fact that now we can't even, you know, be in the top three or that's where that's where we belong you know we might not have, we can't be maybe as invincible as we were back in those days but you look at australia they would lose test matches they lost i think all i think they lost 2-1 in south africa recently but they're going to come back you know they were the best in the world uh, during my period of time mid 90s to you know most most of my career when, even up to when i retired but they would not they're not going to fall out of the top three and that's where I think we let ourselves down. The fact that we are now down at the bottom. How do we move from being the best to being the worst? And all West Indian fans want here and around the world. And we, ha we have a lot of fans around the world. We have perennial favorites for a lot of people that may love their country playing, but second, their second team is the West Indies. Is to see a team that is proud, is to see a team that's fighting. And we have the talent to do so. You know, I said it, I, I would say it again, the talent is there. It's the best talent in the world. How do we harness that talent to ensure that we are competitive is where we are making the mistakes. And hopefully, you know, the selectors, the administrators, the academies can all get it right so we can get back to some semblance of, of success. It's never going to be the same um, with all our hurdles and struggles in the Caribbean. But Caribbean people want to see good cricket, cricket that they are proud of. And I believe that the players and the talent is there to do so. You think the main, the main factor that, that's missing is the, the mental, the toughness to, to fight it out, to fight even when, when you're down, to get a result? Well, I, I think um, it's a lot that's missing, but it's not something that, you know, 
each player have the ability to come to the table with it. You know, it, it could be it could be something that we could develop in, in a team, you know, a fight, um, understanding what they stand for. You can develop that in, in some players. Some players will come straight to the table with it and, and you're happy. You know, um, you look at like a player like Chandra Paul when he was 19, very slim, very light, but he had a purpose. He had tunnel vision of what he wanted to achieve and you didn't have to say much to him. You know, just sort of try to get him into the team environment, understanding what is needed, you know, in a team scenario. But he came with that um, mental mental approach. And I suppose the likes of Richards and, and all these guys, they they were knocked down, you know, losing to Australian, Australian, I think, 74, 75, when they came back. Not with any different ability, they came back with a different mental approach. And um, again, some players went to the wayside even during that time. But we can inculcate that sort of attitude in our players, the ones that don't come with it naturally, and you can get them to produce um, on the other end when, when, when they learn about it. Okay.